when you drive your car or turn up the thermostat on your natural gas furnace, you are using ancient solar energy that fell on the world tens, hundreds of millions of years ago. Now we are shifting to current solar, the energy that streams from the sun every day. Renewables, they're not just the virtuous thing to do, they can be the profitable thing to do. Every year, science editors pick what we think is the biggest breakthrough in the world of science. It is sometimes a major research advance, but sometimes it's something just sort of in the world of science that's going to have a lot of consequences for society as a whole. This year, we've chosen what we're calling tipping point for renewable energy. In 2025, renewables crossed a couple of key thresholds. For one thing, the amount of electricity generated from renewables, that solar, wind, and hydroelectricity, was greater worldwide than the amount generated from coal. For another, the growth in renewables in the first half of this year was more than enough to cover the increase in global electricity use. The world is in many ways on the wrong course still. Fossil fuel use is still rising. Solar and wind are still only a fraction of the world's energy use. But these are thresholds that suggest that they really are on a roll. It's been clear for decades that this is a direction we need to go in. The Paris Climate Agreement really gave it a push because it set very ambitious goals, keeping global warming below two degrees Celsius and preferably as low as 1.5 degrees Celsius. And that basically meant that the world was to bring emissions to a peak quite quickly and then drive them down. That means renewables in a huge way. We are far from on track to meeting those goals. The US has peaked, Europe has peaked, Different countries have peaked at different times. China's overall emissions are probably close to flattening out. The reason is largely the tremendous, tremendous growth in renewable energy. China's emissions peak will largely contribute to a global emissions peak. The story really traces all the way back to more than two decades ago. China faced an energy security challenge. And of course, the air pollution situation really drove China's pivot away from coal fire power plant. The decision makers in China believe that they should really pursue a set of clean tech sectors, started with wind and then solar. Renewable technologies are now 10% of China's GDP. They produce 80% of the world's solar panels, 70% of the wind turbines, and huge numbers of electric cars. No one probably could foresee that we could have ventured this far, right, by 2025. The massive domestic market in China also helped a lot of manufacturers to scale up and by doing so further cut production cost. Compared to production elsewhere in the world, for example, in the U.S., China is more efficient and cheaper. Increasingly, China is exporting a lot of solar panels and solar products Solar is booming throughout the global south. There are very few countries where it isn't, it isn't taking off. A big driver for many countries is energy security. For example, Ethiopia has a lot of hydropower. Hydropower is becoming less reliable there because of droughts. So they were looking for an alternative source of electricity. One option was importing natural gas, but they didn't want to be subject to the vagaries of nat natural gas prices. So they opted for solar, and they have been importing tremendous amounts of Chinese solar technology. People in Pakistan who wanted continuous supply of power for their families would buy generators if they could afford one. But as Chinese solar cells became cheap, they moved in that direction. Mostly they're being used for sort of rooftop solar, sometimes combined with a battery so that people could have electricity at night. It used to be that rooftops covered with solar panels, those were really things that you saw mostly in the rich countries of the world. They were adopted because of climate policies, government subsidies. Now it's kind of a grassroots thing that is taking place in the global south because these forms of energy are, are practical and cheap. The first challenge for many Western countries now is they are not fully committed in utilizing very cost-competitive clean tech products from China, largely due to political and geopolitical reasons. 
can we decarbonize and decouple at the same time? My answer to that question is probably we can't. From a U.S. standpoint, uh, I don't I don't see how that is possible uh, given China's dominating role. To really expand renewables enough <laughs> to drive emissions down, a whole bunch of infrastructure is going to have to be built. Renewables are intermittent, right? They don't get energy from the sun when the sun doesn't shine. The other problem is that these sources of energy are often very far from where it's used. China's big solar farms are often in the west, thousands of miles from the population centers. So what China is doing is building battery farms to store energy. They are building these very high voltage transmission lines, thousands of miles from the sunny west to the cities in the east, and they've built dozens of them. It's barely keeping up with the need in China. Building up that kind of infrastructure is going to be much harder for other countries. So that's definitely a stumbling block. The people I talk to all seem pretty confident that it's going to continue to grow. It's been exponential over the past few years. They don't think it's going to be quite as steep a climb. The economic forces, the practical reasons for using wind and solar are very strong and unlikely to go away. Now, whether it will do so quickly enough for us to avoid the worst consequences of climate change is another question.